Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, my name is Kairul. I am a uh, fourth year CSP student at University of Virginia. Uh, I'm very happy to share my work here today. Uh, this is what we actually did as part of a uh, capstone project during third year uh, in COVID. Uh, and you can see like, a lot of my uh, teammates uh, present during that project. And uh, this actually wanted to, it was like a part of interpreting different deep learning models for COVID-19. So I will probably share some of the other works we also did in the same domain later. Uh, so to begin with, like how we came up with the idea, uh, a lot of the policies in during COVID-19 time was based on like different population age groups, like trying to give priority for vaccination to certain age groups or uh, shutting down your offices because a population from certain age groups are being more COVID-19 positive. So we had the idea, like, can we actually calculate or even some way like predict how much certain age groups will be affected by COVID-19. And that's also using deep learning models, considering the data we have in hand. Which was very challenging at the beginning because we really did not have enough data. And you know, like deep learning models or neural network models really need a lot of data to start giving good prediction or something. And then there was a lot of like uh, difficulty with collecting good data also. Uh, so we started working on uh, collecting data for all of the United States counties. We found that there was more than uh, 3,000 uh, 3, United uh, State counties we could get data for. And then we collected data for different age groups. And we defined the age groups following CDC because that helped us later verify the ground truth uh, that whether what we are predicting is really good or not. Uh, so we collected data for like zero to four or five to seventeen, or same same kind these kinds of age groups, so that we could verify like what happens for baby teenagers or maybe middle aged people or maybe for elderly people as well. And for the model, we are really trying to predict what will be the number of COVID cases for those counties, given we have past information like population percentage for different counties, as well as what was the COVID nineteen cases for those US counties. Uh, and this is also at like daily level. So we are taking around previous two weeks of daily data to predict what will be for the around the next two weeks at each county. So we have more than 3,000 different time series. Uh, so for the training, we used a very recent transformer-based models at that time. In another of our work, we showed that this model was doing uh, better than the other recent deep learning models as well. So that kind of like established it as a uh, very good model to learn like a spatial temporal data. Uh, and uh, we used like for validation and testing, we also like separated some future data. So I have like last two weeks for test and the previous two weeks for validation, which is really important because you do not want to keep the data in the training for testing as well. Otherwise it will not be a good validation. Uh, but our main focus was actually the interpretation. Like, can we really interpret for that the importance of different age groups? Like, are the elderly people more important or like the children uh, or something else? But uh, the main thing is that like, it can really be different from county to county because the number of population in different counties and their demographic and distribution can be very widely different. And uh, we used the sensitivity analysis method to actually estimate that. Uh, to very uh, simplify, the method changes the input a little bit and see how much the model's output changes because of that. And then just takes the ratio. So if the change is very big, for example, we maybe change like very small data value in the input and then see the model is predicting maybe two, two times COVID-19 cases right now then that will be like a very big sensitivity for that particular input, maybe that was like teenagers age distribution or something. So that's how we can kind of like quantify the sensitivity. And we did that for like every day in the past input and for every age groups. That's how we uh, contrast into what are the sensitivity of these different population age groups. Uh, but then again, like even if we get a number for different age groups, how do we actually evaluate like this is good or bad? So we collected uh, age groups COVID-19 case data from CDC, 
which was like for our study period, like around two years of data. And we, you can see the ground truth on the right hand side. Then see like some age groups had like a lot more COVID-19 cases compared to others. But also you can see that it keeps changing with time. So it's like also like a temporal problem, but that also like for the population age groups, it can, can change a lot. Uh, and in summary, when we did the like ground truth comparison, like overall calculation, we say like uh, we ranked the different age groups based on like how what the percentage of that they, they being infected, and we can see like the population age groups like the young stars there were like the infection rate was the highest among them, and then maybe the people who were attending jobs partly because the office was not like fully closed in many cases, so they had to go to office outside interaction. And that also uh, contributed to them getting like more COVID infected. And then we actually compared that to the scores what we are getting from the sensitivity analysis. So this shows the rank of the sensitivity. So if the rank was like uh, the score was very high, that would get one, then two, three, four, something like that. So we see this is the rank we were predicting for our interpretation. And this was the actual rank during that two weeks test period window. And we can see like the difference is like very small, at least like around one or 1.5. So at least we are able to like predict that very well that how it will be the sensitivity of different people uh, during that COVID-19 time. And this is actually we're predicting for the future. Uh, but where do we go from there? So based on this work, we also had like some related work. In one work, we looked inside the deep learning model and see what kind of patterns the model was learning. In other work, we actually did a like black box approach, like we only have input output, and then we explained what kind of patterns uh, are present in the input that's actually affecting your output. And in one of our ongoing work, we are working with LLMs, kind of trying to see if we have like a very small data, can we really use LLM for those cases to give good prediction, which is also important for COVID-19, because we know like if this is like a very recent outbreak, it's not possible to have enough good data for that. And deep learning models will often fail for those cases where foundation models are really good. This is an ongoing work we are doing and it will be in submission soon. So uh, thank you for listening to my presentation. Please feel free to ask any questions.